Hi, I'm Daniel Zengel with PRP Labs here with Don Lipscomb. And today we are going to be talking about the use of PRP to help regrow hair. And there's a really great study that Don's gonna be discussing with us where they compare PRP to 5% minoxidil uh, topical applications to see which one's more effective in um, helping patients with alopecia areata. So Don, can you tell us a, a bit about the study? Sure, so this clinical study wanted to examine basically the efficiency of PRP injections versus topical minoxidil. So sometimes PRP is um, made into a, like a gel topical solution, but right. in this case they wanted to actually inject it into the scalp. Um, so they di the patients had already been diagnosed by um, trichoscopy, which I thought this was pretty interesting that they didn't just do it by observation, they actually used um, this skin surface microscopy method okay. in order to examine the hair and the scalp in right. order to get more objective data Got in the end. Um, so there were 90 patients and it included both men and women and children actually right. because nobody is spared from this. Right, yeah, I remember the study showed before and after pictures of a 15 year old who'd received the PRP treatments that was just jaw dropping from exactly. t total hairlessness on his head to basically a full head of hair within three months or something. Yeah, that, yeah. that's one of the great results yeah, we're gonna get to. Yeah, one of the to. standouts. <laughs> um, so they ranged in age from 10 to 40 years old. Um, all patients were uh, clinically, and uh, my, they, they used the microscopy method too. And what, do, you, do you understand what that is, the microscopy um, method? Yeah, so basically they're just using um, a high powered light source in order to get contrast between uh, I guess like the hair follicles and also the the like venous structures I see. below the scalp. Okay, so that yeah. way they can maybe identify where a hair follicle is, even if there's not a, a hair. Exactly. There. Okay. And um, I guess that they use some sort of contrast method in order to color to some get them kind of to dye. be colored differently. Right. No, there's no dye, so it's like totally hands free. Okay. Yeah, it's and they don't also a lot of um, other types of. of diagnostic procedures require yeah. you to take a biopsy right. with one of the follicles right. or I guess several yeah. and this does not require that right so not invasive and it you know it's just as efficient right um, so these 90 patients uh, were examined and then split into three groups mm -hmm. so uh, and I should mention they were randomly divided up the children and the adults right so, it was so a randomized was, exactly. Study. Um, so group one was treated with the topical uh, five percent minoxidil for three months, and this was applied twice daily. Right. Um, group two received a total of thirty-four PRP injection injections. I found it. Yeah. You found it. Yeah. Okay, I, was I did find it. Okay, yeah. Thirty-four injections. Yeah. I had to do some math though because they didn't. <laughs> did they say how many it was per procedure? Um, well, I guess it was four? for four weeks every four weeks for three months. So that's like 34 divided by three. Yeah. Well, okay, every four, every four weeks for three months. Yeah, okay, Yeah. yeah. got it. Yeah, so, you know, a little bit over 10. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. 11. <laughs> <laughs> so group three received um, topical um, panthenol cream. And so this is just a, a vitamin B, I think, type of cream that it's just used as a moisturizer. Right. It's like, not associated with hair yeah. growth, and that was the placebo group. Exactly. Right. Um, and in assessing the final results, uh, the control group actually showed the lowest clinical significance, so we're not really going to be discussing right. the control group for the rest of the study. Um, the, I guess one of my major disappointments, though, is that they didn't really discuss how the PRP was prepared. Yeah, well, they, they get into it a little. So they, hmm. they say they do a 10 milliliter blood draw from the PRP patients, and then they put that into two five milliliter test tubes. They centrifuge it at 3000 RPM for 10 minutes. And they, they, you know, that's when you do that with any kind of blood, you're gonna end up getting the red blood cells settled at the bottom mm -hmm. and then the plasma supernatant at the top, which has the platelets. Yeah. But the problem is they weren't using a commercial PRP kit. And we've covered this in past videos. When you're just using blood test tubes, you're not going to be able to achieve high levels of PRP. Uh, high levels of platelet concentrate. And you can see in this study, they start with 10 milliliters of blood and they end up with four milliliters of PRP. So you do the math, even if their technique was perfect, you're mm -hmm. barely getting a double 
platelet concentration. And the exactly. authors themselves, it's so strange because they, th right after they describe their procedures, they say, they reference another study and they say it's generally accepted that you want platelet concentrations that are four to seven times or four to eight times above baseline. Exactly. If you do some simple math, they did not get even close to that. But it still showed good results. Well, so. <laughs> it's possible that those good results were the product of adding the platelet activator, That's which right. was calcium gluconate. You're right. They did not say how much they added, but it's well known that activators like calcium glu gluconate and calcium chloride, right. and also um, autologists, you don't want to use bovine thrombin, right. can, can function to, um, to ensure that the platelets are activated, uh, I guess, before injection, but since they injected it, though, it likely didn't um, form that gelatinous solution right. that can occur after 10 to 30 minutes. And that, that's another issue is that they use this calcium gluconate activator, which is a great idea, and that's commonly used in mm -hmm. PRP procedures, but they don't say how long, they don't say how much they added, which no. is crazy. They should <laughs> tell us that if we're going to be able to replicate this study. And they also don't tell us how long they added the calcium gluconate before the injection, which is relevant because as you mentioned, mm -hmm. when you add calcium gluconate as an activator to PRP, the platelets will start degranulating, expressing exactly. their growth factors, forming the fiber network. And we need to know how far along that process is to understand what they're actually injecting into these patients, essentially. Exactly. And also, I, I just don't think that it would be very feasible to inject a gel solution. Probably not. It's probably not. No. no. Yeah, but, but you bring up a good point, because even if their PRP had very low platelet concentrations, mm -hmm. even if it was just baseline levels, when you're activating it, the growth factors, which is really what causes the therapeutic outcomes, exactly. those could be way higher than normal blood baselines. And it should be noted that actually, too, the scalp is like a self-contained system. So unlike, unlike uh, the other areas of the body uh, that have this interconnected network of lymph nodes, mm -hmm. there are actually just two that are at the base of your skull. Okay. And those are the ones that function uh, to trap debris and uh -huh. such whenever you have like a scalp injury, for instance. Okay. And so this, this might indicate that maybe the PRP stayed um, beneath the scalp for longer. It's Rather very possible. than it circulating through the entire bloodstream, exactly. it might be more localized for longer. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Just as a thought. <laughs> there we go. Um, so the overall results. So there are different subcategories of this type of alopecia. Um, so there's uh, patchy alopecia, which is basically just categorized as um, these patches of hair loss. Okay. Um, and this is the most common form of AA, which is this alopecia Ariata. Yeah. Ariata, Ariata. Ariata. Yeah. Um, and this group actually showed a statistically significant increase in hair growth um, uh, for 17 out of 21 patients that were treated with the minoxidil and um, 13 out of 18 patients that were treated with PRP. Right. When they compared to the placebo. Yeah. Both of them are better than placebo. Exactly. Right. Um, so patients categorized as having alopecia universalis which is actually hair loss um, over the entire body. Right. Uh, and this, this is actually one of, one of the most prevalent ones when it, that affects children as well. Okay. So that's why they think that there might be actually some sort of genetic link right. to whatever is inducing this. Because, because this type of alopecia is caused by an autoimmune reaction. Mm -hmm. So there might be a genetic link. Right. But so the patients treated with PRP injections, there were three of them. Uh, with this alopecia universalis? Yes, right? yes. Okay. There were three of them that were um, injected with PRP. And this was perhaps some of the most exciting results because one of the patients who was a 15 year old boy okay, yeah. fully grew his eyebrows, eyelashes, and had a full head of fully pigmented hair. Right, right. And that was after, what was it, like 15 weeks or? Oh yeah, I, I don't know exactly how many, yeah. but it was only they were only doing the three PRP sessions or whatever. So yeah, exactly amazing. Um, and the minoxidil did absolutely nothing for th right. for the patients that were in that group. Okay, and that were treated with it. Right. Um, so, and that's okay. exciting because minoxidil is the standard. Treatment. Yeah. If you have hair loss and you go to a doctor. They give you minoxidil as a topical and mm -hmm. finasticide or something is the, the oral medication. Both of them have like a heap of negative side mm -hmm. effects. 
minoxidil has been associated with dizziness, trouble breathing, uh, like weight gain. Yeah. So it's, it's doing something that is not quite well understood with negative side effects and you have to apply it twice daily. And to top it all off, mm -hmm. when you stop using minoxidil, all the hair that you grew will go away. Yeah, it does exactly. not provide any sort of long-term systemic benefit, whereas the PRP, as we can see in the case of this boy, months later, he's still seeing benefits from just a few PRP injections. Exactly, and most significantly, what this study showed too was that, so people who received the PRP injections actually showed better, faster, and pigmented hair right. growth. Usually with the minoxidil, the hair that grows back first tends to be white or gray. Really? Yeah. Why is that? So there's something about uh, the immune system that seems to want to target uh, pigmented hair. So the melanin granules in the hair tend to be targeted. Okay. And so this, is, this isn't fully understood, but we have a little bit of um, science to explain sort of what's going on here. Sure. So at the cellular level, these hair follicles have something called immune privilege. Um, and that means that they don't express these uh, major uh, histamine complexes. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I don't remember exactly what M it is. M it's MHC. Oh, major histological complex. Yeah. Uh, something like that. Anyway, <laughs> MHCs. Yes, MHC molecules. Um, uh, and they're protected by also immunosuppressive cytokines. So you have cytokines going in there and keeping, keeping um, these killer T cells that want to go in and destroy them back. And they're also like invisible to the immune system. Right. Basically, that means they'll be left alone. Okay. Um, however, uh, in there's a process that goes on that makes, for some reason, these cells start expressing these MHC mm. uh, molecules, and uh, basically, autoreactive T cells start attacking the hair follicle because then it loses its immune privilege because of this increased production of these MHC molecules. Okay. And there's also subsequently brought on by this a surge in cytokines that tell the immune system to go to the hair. Okay. And these MHCs are associated with pigmented hair? No. So they're actually associated with this, all the cells in our body. Okay. So these are some of the, the ways that the immune system recognizes friendly or not friendly cells. Right. Like, for instance, if you get an organ transplant, then this is one of the things that they have to uh, match up. Right. I think the C actually stands for compatibility, okay. maybe. <laughs> yeah. Sure, sure. So, so the, they have to match these up uh -huh. to help uh, to make sure that the immune system doesn't just outright attack the new organ. Sure. I'm just wondering how this ties into what you mentioned about uh, typically when people use minoxidil, they regrow unpigmented hair. So, so this is related to um, uh, so one of one of the uh, one of the cytokines that's actually protective. Um, it's melanocyte stimulating hormone. Okay. So it's thought it's thought that um, somehow the process of melanogenesis is attractive to um, immune cells, okay. basically. Somehow, uh, whenever cells become pigmented, because I think that's during the second growth phase. Okay. So during the second stage of life after like the base membrane has been established, okay. and then you start growing the hair, yeah. then it starts producing these pigments. Yeah. And for some reason, yeah. uh, the T cells are attracted to that. Okay. So it's not fully understood sure, sure. why that is. But, but you, from what we've seen in clinical research, some of these patients that are getting minoxidil that regrow hair, it's unpigmented. Whereas with PRP, yes. that doesn't seem to be an issue. No. So one of the thoughts is that maybe um, maybe it's recreasing, it, maybe PRP is recruiting something called uh, dermal uh, papilla cells. Okay. And basically these are mesenchymal stem cells um, that, uh, that work in order to produce all kinds of different hair. Okay. Hair, uh, hair cells, sure. basically. Um, and they also contain really high levels of something called programmed death cell protein one. Wow. Yeah. I love that and name. And so this, <laughs> this actually will impair T cell function. Okay. Yeah, so I mean, it's really interesting. Actually, so people who um, undergo this type of uh, immune therapy for, I think, 
I think for um, melanomas, for mm -hmm. instance, for cancer. Yeah. Whenever they're given drugs that block uh, this function, the program death cell one mm -hmm. function, then um, they'll actually develop alopecia, the oh, okay. same exact wow. disorder. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So it's thought that somehow the somehow the impairment of this molecule is also one of the contributing factors. Okay. And PRP is known to stimulate proliferation of these cells. Okay. Additionally, um, transforming growth factor beta, right. one of the growth factors found in PRP, is right. um, an, a, is a auto or an immunosuppressive growth factor. Mm -hmm. So it will also tell the immune system to stay away. Right. So that could be some of the reasons. Wow, quite a deep, <laughs> deep hypothesis, Don. Thanks yeah. for breaking that all down for me. Um, so I'll be honest, half that's over my head, but I appreciate you breaking it down for some people who probably understand it a little better than me. Um, and in this study, everything said and done, the, the end results we're seeing compared to PRP versus the minoxidil, what, what mm -hmm. did they find? In the end, uh, minoxidil, uh, did not perform nearly as well as PRP. Overall, in terms of um, how fast the results were, like uh, how, how many patients responded positively to it, it didn't treat as many of the subcategories. Um, and PRP just totally, totally won, right. totally took the goal. Across every parameter, exactly. statistically significant improvements. I, I only wish that they had done a little bit longer term follow-up to right. see if actually the PRP um, hair growth was sustained. Right. Great. Well, Don, thank you so much for getting into the weeds with some science on this one. And uh, yeah, we're going to be putting out some new videos today. So stick around and we'll be back.